Hi everyone, today I wanna to go through um, sort of a weird problem that has come up with uh, with instances in, in GHC. And we're in the process of, of, of implementing a fix. I, I, I know what the fix should be, I just need to find the time to do it. But what's weird about it is that the fix is actually gonna end up rejecting more programs. So so this, this video is a little bit of a way of trying to explain to everyone why we need to do this. Because it turns out that GHC has, has accepted programs for quite some time that are actually kind of bad. And so we're gonna see all of that play out here. Um, so it all has to do with instances and super classes. So let me start out with a fairly simple setup here. So we're gonna have a class C and whoops, and a class D where C is a super class of, of D. So I've always actually found this terminology in Haskell a little bit strange, super class. Um, it, it does kind of connect with what super class would mean in an object-oriented language, but I, I, somehow the words never quite rung true for me. What it means is when we have this relationship here is if we need a C, so let's make a little method in here, just uh, uh, something, doesn't really matter what it does. Um, and now if I have some function here that says, takes a DA, whoops, and then returns a, uh, or takes an A and then returns an A, I can call meth here and this is okay. We see that this is all green up here. And the reason for that is, is that when we have this relationship here, it means that every time we have a DA, we also have a CA. And so down here, GHC says, oh, well, I'm assuming that DA holds. And if DA holds, then that must mean that CA holds. Um, this might be more familiar through one of its very common incarnations, eek and ord. So we have eek a, uh, which has this method, of course. And then we have eek a is a super class of ord a. And so it means that I can change my f here to actually have an ord a instance, and then maybe it just does an equality comparison. So we could take x, y, and then check does x equal y. And this works because it, precisely because of this super class relationship. So that's our, our starting setup here. Um, now, let's go, we can get rid of eek and ord, and we just have c and d to keep things simple. So now, let's say I want to, we can get rid of f as well. Let's say I want to write instance d int. Um, well, I'm going to get an error here. No instance for C int arising from the superclasses of an instance declaration. So when I make this superclass relationship, I said that this means that every time we have a DA, we also have a CA. Well, that means that there's a burden on me every time I make a D instance, there has to also be a C instance. If there isn't that C instance, then the D instance is no good. Right. This is this is sort of what allows us to use that C that to extract that C information from the D later is the is the promise that every time we make a D instance, we're also going to have a C instance somewhere around. So I can fix this error if I write instance C int somewhere in the file. So there's a warning here because I haven't written the method yet, um, but that's not very important for this example. So here now we have we have a warning, but we have no errors in this file. So that's pretty good. Um, Okay, so if we have that, I want to, instead of writing this C instance, maybe I'm just going to assume it, right? So if there is a C int instance, and it's a little bit strange, either there is a C int instance or there's not, um, I could add a variable here. Um, oh, maybe I will, just, just for fun. Let's make this a maybe A, and then this is a maybe A. So that somehow looks a little bit more realistic. Um, now this should work because every time I'm making a D instance, if there's a C instance, that's good enough. So let's see what the problem is. Oh, well, the problem is we need an extension. So let's add the extension. Um, and now what is the problem? Oh, so now there's this check to see, will instance resolution terminate? Right? GHC, we want to know, or GHC wants to know before starting to compile our file, if it tries to solve instances, will that attempt ever sort of loop forever. And so the way that it does this is that every time it sees that it's trying to solve a D maybe A, it's gonna reduce that to a, a look for C maybe A. Well, C maybe A is no smaller than D maybe A. And so that means that maybe someone else has written an instance that C maybe A depends on D maybe A. And if there's no rule to sort of eliminate one of these instances, we might end up with a little network of instances that, that never terminates, and we're just going to solve forever. Um, so GHC normally doesn't like that, but we can turn off that check with undecidable instances. Undecidable instances sound scary. 
Um, I claim under normal circumstances, it's not scary. Well, all that it means is that when you try to compile your program, maybe that compilation will loop forever. Usually when GHC ends up in one of these loopy situations, it just reports saying a context stack overflow. It won't actually make your machine hang. Um, it, it reports a, a decent error most of the time. I don't think we guarantee that. Um, although every time we discover a place where the machine loops forever, we, we try to sort of detect that and, uh, and report a nicer error. Um, so undecidable instances just turns off that termination check. But if the program compiles, then it's still going to run correctly. So I, I claim undecidable instances is not really a dangerous extension. It just means that, well, it means that the, comp the compilation might not terminate, but uh, in the end, the programmer is sitting there watching it compile. And so if it doesn't terminate, the programmer is there to fix things. It's really bad when things go run wrong at runtime and the programmer is off somewhere else. Um, that's a bad situation. Uh, strange things like this are compiled. I don't think that's quite so bad. Um, so undecidable instances should be okay. But we'll discover here that it's not quite okay. And that's sort of the crux of the issue. Um, so, so this instance is fine. But now I want to change this. And instead of having this scenario, let's have class CA implies EA here. Um, and now we've said that because of this super class relationship, that every time I know that EA holds, then I can deduce CA. So instead of assuming C may be A implies D may be A here, um, and again, right, we need this for that check. We need that this, this C may be a fact for the check that D's superclasses are satisfied. Let's instead of, of C, assume E. It looks at first glance that this should work because here I said this EA implies CA. So this E may be A should imply C may be A, which if we look at the error says can't deduce C may be A. What's going on? Well, what's going on here is that GHC has another check. Um, and it's this secondary check that's failing. And to understand what's going on, we need to actually look at how GHC implements these instances internally. I'm going to do all of this in comments because none of this is, is sort of real, but this is how GHC works under the hood. So this CA is really, all classes actually, are really data types. So it would look like this internally. Um, and these data types are called dictionaries. So C, it actually has a method. So we're going to have meth here. And this is going to um, have type AROA. And so every time I have a C constraint, a function that is qualified over a C constraint, actually at runtime, we'll take this little C dictionary, which has the implementation for meth inside it. When I have a super class, then the um, uh, the superclass is embedded inside the, the dictionary of the subclass. Let me just write that out. It'll make a little bit more sense, I think. Um, so make ddict, and this has a ca inside. And then e as an e is an edict, and it also has a ca inside. And so here, what this tells us, if we look at these data declarations, so again, this is how these class uh, declarations are understood internally within GHC. Um, so if I have an ea, I can I get a CA. Well, that's true of these data types too. If I have an EA, I can just unwrap that and get a CA. Um, some of you out there might know that actually this is done via new types instead of data types for these examples, all of which only have one element. That's true, but that's not really the issue at hand here. Um, okay, so if we look at these, this is all well and good. We can understand this. What GHC wants to have is property. No dictionary is ever bottom. So that means that looking at a dictionary, we're never going to loop forever. That's the property that GHC would like to have um, when it's compiling. And so that makes it safe for GHC to synthesize these dictionaries and pass them around and then extract elements from them. If we know that no dictionary can ever be bottom, then we're not going to say loop or throw an exception while we're trying to extract something out of one of these dictionaries. So that's the key property that we're trying to have. If we look at this instance, we have a threat that there could be a bottom dictionary. And the reason for that is that um, what this instance declaration becomes, uh, let's get rid of the error for a sec because it's getting in our way. Um, so what this becomes is this becomes a D maybe A dict. This becomes essentially a variable. Um, and so this is going to have type D maybe A. And what is, uh, no, it's not going to have that type. It's going to have type E maybe A to D maybe A. It's going to be a function. 
And so this is going to get the E dictionary. Um, and what is it going to do? Well, we need to call mcd dict. And then at this point, I need to pass in a CA. Well, we can do that if I use case E dict of muck E dict C. Whoops, C dict. Aha, there we go. Let me close that so we don't have all these squiggles. Um, so there we go. This is how I can understand this instance declaration. I take my E dictionary that's passed in. I pull it apart to get the C dictionary underneath. Um, this is sort of the operational interpretation of this idea that we can extract superclass information from subclasses. And now that I have my C dictionary, I can build my D dictionary using mcd dict. So let's think about property. No dictionary is ever bottom. So this kind of looks okay. So the property says that this edict isn't bottom, but what does it say about cdict? Well, if no dictionary is ever bottom, then cdict also can't be bottom, and so, so all is well. But how do we establish the property? So, so to establish the property, what we're going to do is we're going to make use an inductive argument. And we're going to say that, that you know, how do I know that the cdict isn't bottom? Well, it's because of property. But how do I know property is true? It means that we have to do an analysis on every single instance declaration that says that each instance declaration is just an accumulation of dictionaries that are smaller. right? And then that way I can say, because we're just accumulating dictionaries that are smaller, then uh, as we build up, that every time we build something bigger, it's built out of smaller things. So there can't be any, um, um, any trouble. If we had something bigger, then our induction fails. That's, that's the whole property of induction, is that we can prove something only if it depends on smaller pieces. Right now, in this, in, this, in this case here, I'm taking apart a dictionary that is not smaller than my target here. And that is bad. Um, and this is precisely why GHC rejects this. When I have the C version, so this is the E version, if we look at the C version, uh, this is still a declaration for D. So let me write down the C version up here. So this will actually work. The C version, we have C maybe A, whoops, goes to D maybe A. And then this So is this OK? I claim that it is, because we're assuming here that this is, is not bottom. We don't have to make any assumptions about anything that form it. We just assume that cdict isn't bottom. And therefore, no dictionary over here is bottom. Here, on the other hand, not only do we have to assume that edict isn't bottom, but we have to assume that, every th that this dictionary inside of edict isn't bottom. And that's the part where, if we're doing an inductive proof, we won't have that sort of as an inductive hypothesis. That's not going to work out. Um, and so that's why GHC rejects a declaration such as this. Um, I think it would be better if in the error message it told you something about this. Because if we have a logical understanding of what GHC is doing in all of these superclass relationships, then this really should work. Could not deduce C maybe A from E maybe A. Well, of course you can. Um, but not in this very particular scenario when we're trying to find, when we're trying to satisfy superclasses in an instance declaration from other instances or from other um, class constraints that are assumed in that instance declaration. There's this weird restriction. Um, it turns out, though, that GHC doesn't implement the restriction correctly. So I can cheat. Um, and so here I have an error, but I think it's a different error. Ah, I can't use a twiddle. So let's just turn on type families. A voila. Um, here we have loopy is green. There's no error anymore. And I've just done a little sleight of hand by doing a tiny bit of indirection. It turns out that this indirection is not enough to actually save us from disaster. And so what kind of disaster is that? Well, it means that we can now make a, um, a dictionary that is bottom. So we can do that with just a little bit of tomfoolery here. Um, so what do I have to do? If I say this, but in reverse. Now note, each instance on its own kind of makes sense, because 
I can extract the C from E that, that I need over here. I can extract the C from D that I need over here. So this kind of makes sense maybe. Um, and so now I, all I need is I need to make a function that, I don't know, takes D A, A to A, um, and it uses the method. So, so this definition of my uh, of f here has to use this super class C, because I'm calling meth here. Um, what's this? O D. Oh, D. Oh, ha. Oops. Um, simple error there. Okay. So now that I've done this, now I sort of set the trap, and I need to spring it. Um, evaluate this, and I'm going to make this a maybe int, and evaluate this is going to be f of just five. So this type checks, file is green, but now what happens if I try to run it? So what is this called, loopy? So it compiles, and then now, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, nope, didn't mean to do that at all. Um, now I want to evaluate this, and sure enough, it loops, and that's because it's trying to extract out this C superclass, except that it's bottom. You might think that no one ever does this, but how do we eliminate them from doing it, right? In general, we can have a large network of instances and detecting whether the instance terminates, that's probably pretty hard. And by pretty hard, I mean that we require solving the halting problem, which we're not going to do. Um, so here we have one of these bottom dictionaries. That's bad. And a little while ago, I said that undecidable instances is C, I see it at least, as a safe extension to turn on. It Yes, it means that the compiler might not terminate, but it shouldn't ever cause trouble at runtime, except I've now just made it cause trouble at runtime. The bottom line here is that these kinds of instances, we have to say no. We can't allow these instances. Um, instead, if you wanted to write something like this, just put the CA in, in, in there as well. I guess C may be A in as well. And then GHC will, the, the new version, once the fix is in, is going to be clever enough to use this C maybe A. So the bottom line here is that when you're writing instances, sometimes after this fix is in, you'll have to write what seem like redundant constraints, um, except that they're not really redundant because without them, there's no way that we can prove that we're lacking a, a, a bottom dictionary. And we don't really want to have this, this runtime um, loop that we've seen here. I hope this has been interesting for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.